Fox Sports really dropped the ball this weekend with the truck race. Can we say drop the ball? It's not a stick and ball sport. We need to come up with like a more NASCAR themed saying. Fox Sports really blew the tire on, on it this weekend with the NASCAR trucks broadcast. Anyway, we have to talk about that and a whole lot of news that just came out today and yesterday. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Yes, so I know I'm a couple days late on this topic. Saturday afternoon was the truck race at Martinsville, an all-time classic NASCAR truck series race. We'll talk about that a little bit, but mostly I want to talk about the broadcast because that raised a lot of eyebrows at the end of that race yesterday. We're going to talk about all that, but I also want to talk really quick about some little snippets of news, some big announcements, some driver announcements, some health-related driver announcements. Let's talk about all that first really quick before I get to the main topic of this episode. Firstly, NASCAR did penalize that one crew guy who was involved in the Hamlin Logano scuffle Sunday night, the guy who yanked Denny Hamlin to the ground. Dave Nichols Jr. was suspended one race. He's a tire technician for the 22 team. Uh, he was suspended one race. So interesting to see NASCAR take a stand here and actually say that, hey, there are certain behaviors by crew guys in these altercations that are unacceptable. I know last week I talked about the fact that NASCAR should consider doing these types of things, especially after some of the incidents from, this, from the Tyler Reddick Cole Custer fight. And now after this much more egregious example here in the Hamlin Logano fight, I thought myself as well as it feels like almost everyone else agreed that NASCAR should maybe step in and, uh, and take some action when fights escalate like this, when crew guys escalate the fights that are between drivers. I think it's smart for NASCAR to penalize this guy. One race suspension, fair for me. He didn't like, you know, stick Hamlin's face in the cement and like rub his nose in the ground. No, he just yanked him down. Hamlin was fine. Definitely an over-aggressive move and definitely warranted a penalty. I think a one race suspension is fair enough. Get to the point across to teams and crew guys that, hey, if two drivers are fighting, you guys can get involved, you can de-escalate the situation, break them up, but you can't come in and be the instigator, you can't escalate the fight, you cannot yank the guy to the ground from behind when he's not watching and throw him onto the cement, you can't do that. So I think NASCAR drawing a pretty good line here, I'm happy that they penalized the guy. Other random bit of news, RCR revealed yesterday that Danny Stockman will be stepping down as the crew chief on that three car at the end of this season, and Justin Alexander will resume duties as Austin Dillon's crew chief starting next year in 20. 2020. Justin Alexander was Austin Dillon's crew chief a couple years ago when Austin won the Daytona 500, when they won the Coke 600. This year was Danny Stockman's year. Interesting now that Justin Alexander will be moving back into the crew chief role at the end of this season. Also, you might have noticed this weekend, Matt Tift, rookie driver for Front Row Motorsports, missed the cup race with an undisclosed medical condition. During early in the weekend, he was rushed to the hospital for an unknown reason, uh, was released from the hospital, but then was announced that he would not race in the cup race. Matt Crafton drove the 36 car instead. Now today, Matt Tift revealed some more information as to what actually sidelined him this weekend, and he also revealed that he will be missing the rest of the 2019 season. Matt Tift posted a video to Twitter where he explained that he actually had a seizure when he arrived at the track earlier this weekend, and that's what forced them to rush him to the hospital. That's why he was not cleared to race this weekend and why he's not going to race again this season. Matt Tift, uh, obviously, he survived a brain tumor a couple years back. Remember that whole ordeal? He missed a bunch of time, had to have intensive surgery, Really crazy that he got back in a car at all, given the seriousness of something like that. Uh, but now this could still be related from the sounds of it, from what he talked about in his Twitter video. Uh, they're still trying to figure out answers. And part of the unknown of this whole uh, issue is why he's not comfortable, why they will not clear him to race this season. But hopefully, obviously, health is first and foremost the most important thing. And especially when you're talking about your brain, something <laughs> like that, that is extremely serious. So hopefully, Matt Tift is all right. Hopefully, they can figure stuff out over there. And hopefully, he's able to get back into a car and continue his career. Uh, hopefully next season. But for now, they announced that John Hunter Nemechek will be racing the 36 car the rest of this season. So some a good opportunity, I guess, for Nemechek to get his feet wet, get some laps in cup cars. Nemechek drives for GMS Racing in the Xfinity Series right now, and rumors say that that GMS Xfinity program might be done after this year. They're expanding possibly their truck program, but Xfinity Series might be going away for that team uh, next season. So Nemechek could be looking for a new ride. This could be a good opportunity for him to kind of audition uh, for something new in 2020, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. He'll be driving the 36. Weird that he's going from a Chevy team to a Ford team but I guess that's okay. Uh, but hopefully Matt Tift gets back to back to racing condition soon. All right, and I have more news to talk about, some more stuff from last week, some more stuff from this week, but I'm gonna save that for a video tomorrow because I have a video planned for tomorrow that I'm uh, excited to film as well. So I'm gonna save some of the bigger stuff for tomorrow, but for now, I do wanna hit on that big Fox Sports 1 error from this past weekend's truck series race. That's what everyone was talking about, and now I need to share my thoughts on this. So for those of you who missed it, uh, the truck series race Saturday afternoon at Martinsville was 
just a classic NASCAR trucks race at Martinsville. People leaning on each other, spins, tempers, rivalries, beating and banging on pretty much every corner. Lots of restarts, red flags. It had it all. It was your typical truck series race at Martinsville. And things were getting good at the end. Some of the heavyweights had been taken out. Ross Chastain was battling with the two KBM young guys, Harrison Burton and Todd Gillen. Two hungry drivers, not in the playoffs anymore, but still looking for their first career wins. Chastain, who's one of the most aggressive drivers out there, trying to hold them off. It was insane. Some of those late race restarts were insane. Some of the green flag racing between those three was insane. And then we came to an overtime restart with two laps to go. They were on the pace laps, getting ready to take the green. And then this happened to the Fox broadcast. And his teammate, Tom Gill No driver has started more for Kyle Busch Motorsports without a win. So, Gilliland would like to change that today. The restart, overtime. That is exactly how it was delivered. I did not edit that in any way. And actually, it stayed that way for the entirety of the restart, just with that blank FS1 screen and the radio broadcast. Stayed that way throughout the entire two-lap restart, where Todd Gillen was able to get away and get his first career win. So congrats, Todd Gillen. Too bad nobody saw it on TV live. <laughs> uh, and then Harrison Burton, Chastain got together, spun. That sounded extremely dramatic, but none of, no, none of us got, got, got to watch it. So... What the heck? The picture of the video briefly came back when Todd Gillen was doing his burnouts, and this is all we saw. And we gotta go to college football. Congratulations to Gillen and KBM, winners at Martinsville. No score, 8.55 to go. Mm, okay, where, where do I even start on this? Firstly, I understand that it's live sports, live entertainment, live television. I understand that technical glitches, things like that, just, Things happen, I understand that. But the timing of this issue literally could not have been worse and the handling of, of it uh, afterwards and as it was happening could not have been worse either. This was a, maybe the biggest slap to the face uh, to NASCAR fans I can think of in recent history. The disrespect Fox showed to NASCAR in this moment is through the roof, astronomical. Let's talk a little bit about what happened because you know, there are some explanations for this. This is what I believe happened. Obviously, you could say it's a technical glitch. I don't really think it was a technical glitch. I think it was a manual glitch. So the truck race was running long. I mean, simple as that. They had like a 15 minute red flag, a lot of yellow flags. Uh, you know, Marsville's known for a lot of yellow flags, especially in the truck series, but they're even more than usual. So the, the, the truck series broadcast was eating into the college football broadcast between Iowa State and Oklahoma State, I think it was. Uh, I don't really know anything about college football. I think Iowa State's ranked, so I guess they're pretty good. I guess that's probably a pretty you know, exciting game, I don't know, a game that people were interested in. So obviously Fox Sports didn't want to anger those fans, didn't want to lose those ratings. And what this really comes down to is Fox Sports prioritized college football fans of Iowa State versus Oklahoma State over NASCAR fans of the Truck Series. That's what this really comes down to. Fox Sports blatantly prioritized football, college football, uh, over NASCAR trucks. That's, that's what this really comes down to. And is anyone really that surprised? I'm not. It's college football. It's in the middle of college football season. I, it's a Saturday afternoon. I get it. But that being said, I have watched plenty of NASCAR races, trucks, Xfinity Cup, on Fox, on NBC, on wherever, that have eaten into college football games the same way this race did, and they have never swapped the channel as abruptly as they did in this case. They have never uh, disrespected NASCAR in the way they did this weekend, which this is where I'm going to make my own kind of theories. This is where I'm going to kind of make my own suggestions here. All year long, I feel like on the TV side of things, NASCAR has been kind of up and up. Ratings on Fox and FS1 at the beginning of the year were higher than they were last year. Ratings so far on NBC and NBCSN this year have been higher again than they were last year. So NASCAR TV ratings have been up slightly this year. That's been good at the beginning of this year. Remember, Fox Sports invested more in its NASCAR coverage. They have a big new studio in Charlotte. They you know hired guys like Bob Pockris. They hired Jamie McMurray, added him to their TV broadcast did the big going away thing for Daryl Waltrip. So really up to this point, and we look at NBC, their coverage continues to take steps up this year. Dale Jr. is a bigger part of the broadcast. We look at TV and NASCAR this year and everything's been going up. There's been such a lot of positive momentum around NASCAR and live TV this year until this moment. This is the first real just like blemish on the season and it is a big one and I'm worried and I hope it is not indicative of how things are going to change going forward. Because up until this point, this whole year, Fox has indicated that they're very invested in their NASCAR coverage. Maybe not as much as NBC is. NBC has gone all in on motorsports, I believe, with the way they've handled IndyCar and everything as well. But Fox is Fox is still very invested in NASCAR, and at least that's what they've shown all year long until this moment where they had the perfect opportunity to let these NASCAR fans who spent two plus hours watching this race to get to the finish, 
They could have let them watch that finish, and they didn't. Instead, they cut immediately to college football. They prioritized, you know, the first quarter of a college football game over the last two laps of a NASCAR race, and that is something they wouldn't have done five years ago, two years ago, last year. That's something they only did today, well, this weekend. Obviously, there could have still been some technical glitch involved, but I think it was mostly manual. I think there was a very high up person at Fox who was very stressed that, you know, the college football game was being interrupted by this NASCAR race, and he wanted those college football ratings, and I think he was sitting there like, we need to speed up this NASCAR race, we need to get to football. He was putting a lot of pressure on his people, and I think someone made a mistake. I think there was a lapse in judgment there. And what do they have? They didn't really make any college football fans that happy. There was nobody sitting there on Twitter going, yes, they put the game on, it's eight minutes to go in the first quarter, yes! But there were thousands of angry NASCAR fans on social media that were just livid with Fox. I've seen people calling for everything. I've, I've, people want to go just tear down the Fox studio. They want Fox to move to the moon or something now. Fox Sports angered a lot of passionate NASCAR fans. That's one thing I've always heard from advertisers. NASCAR fans are some of the most loyal, some of the most passionate fans in sports, and Fox Sports <laughs> angered that hornet's nest pretty, pretty badly this weekend. Uh, how do they regain the fans' trust from that? I don't know. I don't think they can. I think only the only thing that can heal this is time. If they manage to not make this, not have this happen for many more years, maybe NASCAR fans will forget. But I don't think I don't think they're ever going to forget this specific incident. I think everyone will always remember. Where were you when Fox cut away from Todd Gillen's first career win because an average college football game was in the first quarter? Where were you when that happened? I think that's going to be a, a running theme for NASCAR fans for many years to come. The fact that they cut to the football game from the race with literally no explanation. Oh, it's just insulting. It was hard to watch. I was watching it. I was actually streaming it. I was streaming it on the Fox Sports Go app or whatever it was, and when it cut out, I thought, oh no, is this just an issue with the stream? And no, it was an issue with literally everything. So, just is what it is. But I feel like I had to address that issue, talk about it more than just what happened. I want to try and maybe speculate, maybe at least discuss some of the possibilities of what happened behind the scenes, because that's the truth. A college football game brings in a lot of ratings. If NASCAR or Fox is going to prioritize NASCAR trucks over a college football game, I think the college football game probably is going to take priority. It's just very disappointing to see Fox, you know, cut away in the last two laps. That's two laps. That's not even a minute. Not even a minute. Not even 60 seconds longer. It's just, it, that's pretty tough. That That's inexcusable. That's something that cannot happen. You cannot have technical difficulties or technical difficulties like that on the last two laps of a truck series race like that, especially one that was as exciting, one that had as much historical significance as that did. You just can't let that happen. So that's all, that's my thoughts on that whole thing. It was really just shocking. I couldn't help but laugh after it happened. I just couldn't believe <laughs> that, that this was happening on national television. Anyway, y'all, that's all I have to talk about on this topic. I have some more videos planned for this week. Like I said, I want to talk about that rumored Floyd Mayweather thing with NASCAR. I also want to talk about Tony Stewart's big announcement this week and what he's going to be doing here in the next few days. So I have a few things I want to talk about in tomorrow's episode, but that's all I got for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram, all that great stuff. And a big thank you, of course, to my Patreon supporters. Michael Harrison, at you as the stars, Cameron James, John Koblenz, Jason R. Long, Wesley Donaldson, Isaac Dennis, and Mika Suzuki, iFantasyRace.com, TheRacingInsiders.com, Matthew Kulapos, Pepe Lucius, Jeremy. Conkley, Amelia Garcia, Joey DiMaccino, Sky Racing Forms, Bryce Schumacher, Bryce Starcher, Scott McNew, Colton Austin, Bradley Pelletier, and the rest of these incredible Patreon supporters. I couldn't do the show without the support I get from awesome people like you, so thank you for your continued support. It's going to be a busy week for videos, a lot of content, a lot of news, a lot of stuff happening. It's spooky season two. We got Halloween right around the corner. Going to be fun. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support, and I will see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye, everyone.